Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. When I was very little, every Sunday at the Manlius United Methodist Church, we would have at least a few cadets from the Manlius Military Academy. I can still see them in my memory. They were everything a boy wanted to be. Straight, strong, uniformed, blue coats and white pants, serious, with medals on their chests. Oh yeah, every week I went to church and sat there thinking about what it would be like when I would get old enough to go to military school. Of course, I never did. The school was closed by the time I got old enough to go, and my family couldn't have afforded to send me even if it was open. The funny thing that is, is that in high school, I was really the opposite of a military academy cadet. I was more into music than marksmanship and studying the Bible more than starching my uniform. How often it is that someone will make a heartfelt decision that the course of his life will go in a particular direction only to find that reality takes him in a completely different direction. One close friend of mine wanted to be a TV producer, and he was for a number of years, but now he's a nurse manager in a nursing home. The reality of wanting to spend at least a little time with his family moved him in a completely different direction than the one he had chosen. Another friend of mine grew up as part of our youth group at our, at our church and was committed to Jesus Christ. Now he has children who have virtually never set foot in a church. In his case, reality didn't stop him from following the decisions he had made as a young man, not at all. He had just simply forgotten his decision, and when I talked to him about it, told me that he had moved on. In today's Gospel reading, we encounter the story that gives us the phrase, Doubting Thomas. By divine design, St. Thomas was not with the other disciples when our Lord first appeared to them. And so when they told him that Christ had risen, he responded by saying those words from the 20th chapter of St. John's Gospel. Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. The way St. Thomas said those last words, umi pistevso in the original Greek, is, has a certain finality to his statement. He was not saying that he might remain distrustful about the resurrection if he didn't get the proof from the disciples that he wanted, but he was saying that he had set himself against ever believing in the resurrection. There's a future tense in Greek that expresses a kind of possibility that something will happen, and there's a future tense that presents a kind of finality. This second kind was the kind that St. Thomas used. Umi pistevso could be translated best, I will never believe. Now, as we know, our Lord met him in his need and in his request. He asked for the print of the nails, and he got them. He asked for the hole in the Savior's side, and he got it. And what happened then? St. Thomas's attitude changed as much as any man's can change, and he believed. So, I've talked about two decisions that people made that were not realized my own decision to become a military cadet, and Thomas's decide, deciding not to believe in the resurrection. Both decisions were abandoned. 
Now, I'll have to say that I have made other decisions in my life that I did indeed follow through on. I remember when Presotetta and I were, knew that we were going to leave the Protestant church, the faith in which we had both been raised, and that we were going to search for another church. We fought, thought for a long time that God was leading us into the Catholic church. Things just didn't work out for us in terms of that search. But I remember again and again as I was praying about that, that I knew God was calling me into the priesthood. But, I said to God, I think their priests are all celibate. What am I going to do with my wife? I didn't really hear anything other than that continual assurance that I was going to be a priest. So I stuck with it. I'm going to follow through on this. I'm going to obey what I know you want me to do. And guess what? As I stuck with that decision through thick and thin, through all sorts of troubles, eventually it became a reality. And what about St. Thomas? After he said, my Lord and my God, to the risen Jesus, did he remain true to his decision? Certainly. You can ask the Christians of India, and they will tell you that he most certainly remained committed to Christ as Lord and God as he brought the light of the gospel to their land and to their people. So this is what we have before us, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we make decisions that we think will chart the course of our, the rest of our lives, and sometimes we remain committed to those decisions for our whole lives, and sometimes we don't. Is that true for you? Can you remember deciding things that now when you look back on them, you can even hardly remember them? And other things that have put you right into this place where you right are right now, into this family, into the job, into the life that you have today. And what is it that makes one decision good and uh, good to abandon and another decision good to hang on to come what may. I've said it before, listen to God. God will lead you. He will speak to you. His will and his direction are so easy to understand that you will sometimes miss it because of its clarity. Listen, the greatest communicator in the world is the Holy Spirit. Even when we try to drown out his voice by making noise every waking minute of every day, the sound comes through. If not through your ears, then it will be written in your heart by the finger of God. Pray with words, brothers and sisters, but don't forget to pray also with silence. Yes, the words of the scriptures are God talking to you, but sometimes he also uses other means, other voices to gently guide you toward the light and the truth. Pray with silence and let that voice make its wishes known. I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. God loves you. Can there be anyone else's voice who's, who you would want to listen to more? Listen to God, brothers and sisters. Listen. His voice will lead you as it led St. Thomas into all truth. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen.